What's up guys, Sila here, and we are back with another rare mount guide, this time taking a look at the Drake of the South Wind, which is a 1% drop chance mount that comes from the Throne of the Four Winds, and this drops from Alakir. Throne of the Four Winds has two bosses total, and this guide's going to look towards being able to solo it on 10-man normal difficulty, but it should also be useful to people looking to do it in a small group as well. As I said, we are going to do it on 10-man normal. The mount has the same chance to drop on all four difficulties, 10, 25, and 10-man heroic and 25-man heroic. And the actual raid itself is located in Uldum. As you'll see, uh, south of Uldum, you'll see Throne of the Four Winds. It is located in the sky, so make sure you fly upwards to find it, as it won't be located on the ground. And if you're trying to bring a friend there, make sure you summon them. It is a level 80 raid, so I would recommend being level 90 if you attempt to do this in a small group, and definitely if you're looking to solo it, because it is quite a challenge. And the raid consists of two bosses. The first is the Conclave of Wind, which consists of three mini-bosses, and that's the first one we're going to take a look at. So it consists of Rochelle, or Rohash, Anshal, and Nazir. And each platform is meant to have someone on it. This is why it becomes a bit difficult to solo. If you're not on the other two platforms, a debuff will occur. And if you're not on Rohash's platform, you'll take damage and you'll be silenced. That's why we go to his platform first. Nazir's platform, if you're not on there, he'll give you 50% less haste. So you'll have 50% less haste total, like flat. So it'll take you double the time it would to normally cast. And you'll deal frost damage. And finally, Anshal will uh, reduce your healing received by 100% and deal nature damage. So, the order that I'd recommend doing them in um, would be Rohash, then run over to Anshal, and then finish up with Nazir, because I feel his debuff is less threatening, especially to a melee. We don't really rely on haste too much. You know, most of the abilities are instant cast, and they don't rely on haste. So... That's the order that I do it in, but you're going to have to look towards a strategy that fits your class and spec. In terms of Rohash, he'll summon a tornado. If you're hit by it, you'll be knocked into the air, take some damage, and then take falling damage. That's really it. And once we head over to Anshel, he'll summon adds and he'll put down like a healing circle on the floor. You want to move out that healing circle because it will heal him and his adds. And then finally, Nazir. He'll kind of do like a frost patch on the ground that'll slow you and deal damage. And he'll do like a frontal cone, um, frost breath, and a stacking frost debuff as well. Now, when you kill one of them, you have a minute to kill the rest of the bosses before that boss reactivates. So you have to kill them all within a minute of each other, otherwise the fight will basically be voided. As you see, I keep taking a look at Rohash to make sure he hasn't reactivated and I've got enough time. And at this point, I've got about 20 to 30 seconds. I am doing this in about 5... 70 item level so I'm quite geared as you've seen I blew up Rohash but I've seen a lot of people do this in a lot at lower item level like around a 530 point so depending on your class and spec will depend on if you're actually able to solo it but you can take in mind what I've told you now and if you bring a friend it should easily be two manable and definitely three manable and if you bring some friends you'll be easily able to do it what I'd recommend doing it is spreading them out to separate platforms so now we're on to Alakir. To get to Alakir, you'll click the slipstream in the middle of each of the platforms, and we're going to pull him. So he has three phases. Phase 1 isn't really too difficult, especially if you're on your own. Basically what made this fight or phase difficult was the fact that you had to be spread out, as he'll do like a, a frontal cone, like chain lightning somewhere. Or it's not really frontal cone, but it's like a cone chain lightning. And if you near over people, it'll chain between you all and deal a lot of damage. So that's why you had to be spread out. Phase 2. Um, oh, and also there'll be like a, a tornado line going around the platform, and there'll be a gap in between it. So you need to find that gap and go through it. Phase 2, you'll summon an ad that you can use. If you kill it near him, you'll take more damage. Phase 3, you'll be knocked into the sky, and he'll summon like lightning clouds. And just keep moving down every time a lightning cloud spawns, and keep moving down until he's essentially dead. And that's really the main mechanics you need to worry about. There's a couple more. But they're the more threatening ones that we're, we're going to talk about here. He also will do a sort of breath thing that can knock you off the platform. So just be a bit careful for that. And try and be more towards him rather than on the edge of the platform. But he has very little HP on 10 mana and should be very, very quickly killed by anyone in plus 540 gear. Which is very, very easily achievable nowadays. So hopefully this guy's helped you out. Good luck getting them out and thank you all for watching. See ya!